during the first naval battle in November of 1942, um, she was, you know, engaging the Japanese. Suddenly, out of the bloom comes this hulking steel fortress. Oh my gosh! Uh, the battleship EI, because you know EI is a much larger ship, battleship, and uh, this little puny destroyer comes up against her. Yeah. And you know. I think most of us would be, you know, scared and getting ready to turn and run, but uh, her sailors rose to the moment, and they kind of went down her side, firing her little five-inch guns at her. It's kind of a classic David versus Goliath story, and um, her shells are credited with injuring the uh, Japanese Admiral Abe and killing his chief of staff, Whoa. but uh, the price to be paid for that moment of heroism was that... Uh, she also supposedly took a 14-inch hit, and shortly after the encounter, was hit by torpedoes and sunk. Laffey won um, the Presidential Unit Citation nice. for that action, which is the highest honor that can be bestowed on a U.S. Navy ship. Yeah. Looks like we're coming up some torpedo tubes here. Oh. What direction would these torpedoes be you traveling would, uh, when they launch? Well, you you turn the launcher and oh. you aim it that way, then the torpedoes shoot out. It's pointing aft right now, so it's not trained. We're speculating that since the um, torpedo tubes are not trained to either port or starboard, that the torpedoes are probably still in the tubes. So there, there are a couple of big holes, but those are plates yeah. that have clearly fought, fallen out, <laughs> fallen forward. If anyone sees any evidence really of a 14-inch projectile hit, yeah. shout out, please. It should be an obvious hole. Actually, so looks like there was some damage forward of the keel, bilge keel there. I don't know if that's implosion or... So where yeah, are we looking? And, and we will try to work our way to see the, the inside of the... So we're approaching the superstructure now? I'm kind of wondering if this damage we're damage. seeing here at this level was if that was actually caused by the 14-inch hit. This gives you a real sense of the size of people. Portholes, railings. Can we Sir? go up a little higher and see if the gun director is still here? Yeah, wow. So that's go. the director up there that had uh, a rangefinder on it, too. The rangefinders calculate the distance to your target. So this gives you where to point, and then... The rangefinders tell you the distance, and together it's called fire control. This is, I think, a, these are machine guns, I think. Can we zoom in to see if we can see inside the bridge hatch? Sure. I'm just curious if we can see maybe her uh, helm wheel or... It's like there's, there's a the, uh, telegram little... or telegraph. Oh. Yep, there's the engine order telegraph. With a little crab hanging out, too. Yeah. That's kind of in... Right here is the... The engine order telegraph, that's where the bridge would communicate with the engine room to what the last order let them know was. how fast to go, to let them know what speed you want. Oh. It's got a little, you can see the brass handles on the top that would rotate, and then the engine room would respond, and there would be a little pointer on it that would acknowledge the order. Wow. So what are these white things that are... Those are portholes that have port been blanked holes. out. Wow. Oh. Frank, would those have been welded over during the war? Like, were those closed up initially? They were closed up as uh, ships were being prepared for combat because they were no, they were seen as kind of a, a weak spot vulnerability. If they were open or damaged, they'd, of course, be a source of flooding. Of course, it made internal conditions <laughs> hot in the tropics if you didn't have ventilation. Here's uh, one of the turrets, still clear. Yeah, there's one of her 5-inch 38 mounts, trained to stream port. So now we're about three quarters away up the starboard side. The 5-inch 38 the kind of became a, one of the main staples of U.S. anti-aircraft weaponry during the war. We're looking at a single mount, um, which was common at the start of the war, but it was later superseded by a dual mount. That became kind of the secondary armament on our fast battleships, cruisers, we will. We'll get and the some, main we'll armament really nice. on this later destroyers. Pa is that the bridge with the portholes? Yeah. For those listening in the States, uh, 
There are several good examples of destroyers from World War II that have been preserved as museum ships. So if you're finding this interesting, there are some that you can actually go and visit and see the intact version. This is the director again? Yeah. Up here? In fact, the ship that uh, With a crown was uh, named Laffey after this one is uh, currently a museum piece down in Charleston, South Carolina. How many Benson class did they make? There were 30 Benson class destroyers built into the separate groups. There probably could be a big shell hole there. Yeah, look yeah. at that hole, oh my gosh. Can we get a sense of how big, can we get the lasers on that? Yeah, that's big, about 10, 20, 30. Almost a meter, huh? Yeah. Can we zoom in a little there? Sure. Test go for it. Looks like we see inside some of the ship's structure there. Yeah. Maybe those were wood crates or something, huh? With, a wood, no. with metal frames? No, they look like... No, uh, frames for... Or um, beds? Or bed frames or something um, like that. Or storage racks. Or storage racks. So, yeah. Racks. I'm sure one of my destroyer people are going to chime in and let me know what we, what we were looking at. Well, Jonathan Normack says we're in the vicinity of the Chief Petty Officer's showers. Maybe the stateroom just after that. And is this the starboard side? This is the starboard this side. This is the starboard, starboard side. side. Yeah. We're starboard quite, quite near the bow, the starboard side of the bow section. Okay, Tess, thank you. Yeah, this is quite remarkable, but. Yeah, it's almost like, a, like an accordion. Yeah. <laughs> Do we think that's from the seafloor impact? Your yeah. guess is as good as mine at this point. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we just haven't encountered this type of damage before. I think this is what these fellows would call oil canning. Is it? Ten cans. Hmm. Where it compresses the air inside or, or it crunches inside? the sheet metal? Well, we'd be in the area where the hull number would be, so if anyone sees 459, shout out. <laughs> Frank, do we know if it's the big style numbers across the no. whole hole or no, small? Yeah, it'll it's be a rustic one. Okay. All right, we have a request that uh, there's a big gouge on the edge of the deck on the port side just after the anchor and we'd yeah, like, right to get, we'd like nope. to get a measure yep. when we get there. Oh man, look at that collapse there. There we go, there's the gouge. Uh, okay, so 10, 10 centimeters there, probably opening up to 20. Some analysis from our uh, experts ashore suggesting that the gouge in the bow from friendly fire uh, from an 8-inch shell, which uh, would have necessitated it being yep. from a U.S. cruiser. Just further evidence of the degree of just chaos, you know, imagining these ships yeah. coming, colliding, you know, combined closing speed at nearly 60 miles an hour in the pitch black uh, those nights. a very nights. confined area, too. It's extremely confined. So. That's been one of my takeaways being here, is just, it's stunning to see how close the islands are together you know yeah. to really we you know we're never out of view of the three island groups would those be a some go ahead. projectile damage yeah you so that looks like a shell hole right mm -hmm. there maybe one of our first here on this vessel it looks like it almost hit the torpedoes then huh that could have led to a very disagreeable outcome there's a plate right there on the bulkhead to read yeah that might actually be her builder plate I think that's oh, yeah. her builder plate. Yeah. Oh my gosh. USS Laffy. Yeah, that's her builder's plot. Oh. Good eye. Well found. That wasn't that's me. That's incredible. That wasn't me. Oh, it was, that was Jonathan Olmec. Awesome. <laughs> Good eye. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Something state oh. company. That's, that's unbelievable. She was built by Bethlehem Steel, uh, San Francisco. Which That's was, what it says, Bethlehem yeah. Steel Company. Yeah, which was uh, formerly the Union Iron Works. Wow. Oh my gosh. So what that an is incredible an incredible find. Oh. Yeah. That USS Laffey at the top on the right. Wow. Yeah. I got chills on this one, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs>